We're done with the workflow on the processing tools. I want to briefly do a, a bit of demo to show you some of the tools that exist in the toolbox, which you may not know. And I have a video which I've linked from here. And what I'm going to show you is part of the video. So if you want to kind of know more, you can watch this video. But I'm going to show you some tools that exist, which you know you may not realize it's there. So let's just do a quick demo of some of the stuff that we want to do. Let's say I have some photos and I want to create a map from my photos. So I have in this folder some photos that I've taken from my camera, phone camera. And most phone cameras have an option to save the light log information. So you can save your geotags in your photo. So these photos are some of the photos I just went on a hike and took some photos. I took it from my iPhone camera, which also saves the azimuth. So it shows the direction of my camera. Also, along with that, there are Android apps, which can also save those information. So I have light log as well as the camera direction saved inside of this photos. So I want to create a map of this. I want to say I did some field work. I want to create a map from this photos using QGIS. So I can come to processing toolbox and I can search for this tool called import geotech photos. I can show a folder full of photos and just click run. So if you went on a field trip recently, download the photos and try this out, you will see all the locations where you click the photos. And if I click run, you'll see that I have this points that I imported here along with my attribute table, which is extracted from the photos. So I have the photo location, the file name, the light long of the photo and the direction and the altitude. All of this information has been extracted and I have a spatial layer. I can overlay it on some map. And you can see now I have this photos location as created as map. I can do something interesting with it since I have the direction of it. I can create a layer showing the view code of what area was a viewing from that particular photo. So there is a really nice tool called wedge buffers. These are the buffers which are kind of, you know, you can think of a view code. You can create those using this create wedge buffer tools. Here it said, what is the direction of the wedge buffer? We can say, let's read it from the direction. So the wedge buffer will be that in the direction of the photo angle that we took. And we can say the radius, since this is a decrease, we'll just use a small value. You can deproject it and use it in meters. But now you can run this and you can see I have now created a map like this. So it shows me where I was standing, what was the region that I covered. If I even knew, want to go one step, I can say I know the focal length of my camera and I can kind of configure it exactly to cover, see the view that I covered using. And again, all of this is built into your toolbox. Another popular tool is if you have a bunch of points like this, you say, I want to create some lines. I want to create a path. I have trajectories information. I've got some GPS tagged locations from like 10 different species. I want to create the path that they took. And in the past, again, people use some plugins to do this. In the toolbox, you have this nice tool called point to path. Points to path. And take a layer and say, how are your layer input layers ordered? We say it's ordered by a timestamp. If you have species or some different items which you want to group by in the different tracks, you can use this. This one is a single one, so I can just run this. And you can see now I have a nice line that is joining in the order in which I took the photos. So all of this is now possible using the built-in tools that you have within QGIS. So my advice is next time you're faced with some challenge, look for the tool in the toolbox and likely that you'll find some tool that is able to carry out your workflow.